And so, with this week's episode of Glass Slip, we have a lot of development, a lot of things happening at the exact same time. We have that drama getting even stronger. So, I want to talk about the ending first. I want to talk about that ending because that really has me the most intrigued out of the entire episode. One thing, though, that happened at the end really got to me. So, Yanagi announces in this episode, right at the end, towards Okikura, saying that it's your fault why I don't find Yuki attractive anymore. And so, here is what I instantly thought of. So, I'm guessing the reason why Yanagi doesn't like Yuki anymore, why she doesn't find him attractive anymore, is because she's kind of fallen for David or Okikura and fallen for the way he looks, or she's gotten to see the true personality of Yuki and she doesn't like getting to see him like that, and so that's why she's fallen out of love from Yuki. So, if that's the exact reasons, if that's the reason why, you know, I guess uh, Yanagi doesn't like Yuki anymore because of his looks and that she's starting to fall in love with Okikura, I want to say that she never loved, you know, Yuki to begin with. Now, if it's about the personality, let's talk about that. If the reason why Yanagi fell out of love with Yuki because of his personality, the way he's acting, then she probably would never have liked him to begin with if they would have gotten together since, you know, technically that must be part of his personality to begin with if he acts like he does now. And so, it most likely would never have worked if right now Yanagi technically has fallen out of love with him. So besides that, now that I got past that point, I want to talk about a couple other things. So, the foreshadowing we got in this episode was pretty strong. For instance, we see how our main female character, Toko, sees the future of Okikura falling off like a ledge or something. It looks like the same ledge that they were talking at when you saw Toko look into the future. And so, the big thing here is, is the fall we see Okikura falling from, he was falling down head first on the back of his head, so, and then you saw concrete underneath him. Judging by how uh, large the drop was, looking at the way, you know, the flashback was, or the future, you know, looking at the future, pretty much it looks like he might die from that fall, or something really bad's gonna happen, because he's falling at least a good 10 feet on top of his head, which can kill someone in real life, so, I mean... The big thing here is, is he going to die? Is there a way to prevent that future from happening? Big questions here, because supposedly from what Okikuro-kun said in this episode, is that you cannot change the future. You cannot change the events that are already going down, that's already been predestined. And so I'm interested to find out exactly how does he know about that. That's the big thing right now. So, getting off that entire point, I want to talk about something that's probably the most like, what the fuck did I, did I just see in this episode moment. Right at the beginning, we see three Okikuros next to each other. They're like right next to each other, they're talking to each other, and they all seem to have linked minds with their different people. And right here, that's really kind of, uh, left field. I mean, did anyone see, like, you know, Okikura being fucking crazy? Like, I mean, he just has, you know, like, I guess, memories of himself, or he's talking to himself, like, you know, imaginary friends. He's just talking to his fucking self, because you clearly see when his father passes him through, like, the house, and you see Okikuro, like, in one scene, he had three people around the fire, but when the father's point of view, there was nobody around him, it was just him by himself. And so, this makes me believe that Okikuro is crazy, or the power of seeing the future has caused this to him, one or the other. But whatever it is, I'm curious of why they would show us three versions of himself. Because the more and more I see of his character, the more and more I believe that he's fucking nuts or psychotic or something. Because he sleeps outside in a fucking tent, he goes in the middle of the forest just to, just to lay down, and then he decides to freaking just, I guess, talk to himself. So it's really messed up. And the other thing, too, that really happened this episode, and I have noticed the past couple episodes, is that ever since Okikuro came into the picture of the group of friends, everybody's been scattered, splitting up, and it was actually mentioned in this episode. And so you have to think about that exactly. It seems like Okikuro is the cause of everybody being split up. I mean, you have Yuki now not being loved anymore by Yanagi. You have Sachan getting to see her true personality of how she's trying to manipulate her friends into ruining the date between our main two characters, uh, Okikura and Toko, so you gotta think about that for a second, we're getting to see the real personalities of all these characters, of how, I guess, mischievous they are, and how far they will go to keep their friendship intact, it's like they're all having problems with David, but technically he's not really doing nothing, I mean, think about this for a second, okay, this dude, Okikura-kun, hasn't even been in the picture a lot, he barely is in any episode. I mean, every time we see him, he's like in one little point by himself with just Toko. That's it. I mean, he really hasn't spent time with the entire group at all, even since the beginning. If these group of friends actually cared about their group, they wouldn't be getting split up over something so silly. It, it, let's just be honest here, okay? I mean, you gotta think about this. I mean, 
what real importance has, you know, Okikura been in this group? I mean, we only seen him in the group, the entire group, for about once or twice, and that's it. I mean, why aren't these groups coming together? If one dude can interrupt your entire group meetings and friendship, I don't think you're true friends to begin with. I'm just going to be honest from my point of view. I'm, I'm just being honest. If I mean, if I had a group of friends I was spent a long time with, months, years, and stuff with, and to have this one random dude come in and fuck up everybody's, you know, friendship... I guess we weren't friends because one dude should not be able to ruin true friends. It, it should. One person should not be able to ruin a group of friends that really care for each other. So, I'm just throwing that out there. It might sound a little bit mean, but I mean, that's how I personally feel about that. But overall, good episode. I enjoyed the episode. A lot of shit went down. And I wonder exactly what, you know, Yanagi meant about falling out of love with Yuki. So, anyways, tell me your thoughts. I love all of you so much. You have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.